All right, we're gonna move into troubleshooting now, uh, and the first bit of troubleshooting we'll do is just how to take the back. This is, like, there's some overlap here where this doesn't have to be troubleshooting. I'll just go to the front here. Like, um, this can just be a strategy that you employ to get to your partner's back, but let's just say for now, if you're employing this, you're trying to leg lock someone, and they are turning, hiding the heel, and building into base. Like, this is the, the thing that we're talking about, where I have a choice where I can try to, like, break you back down, maintain control, and get to this leg. I can attempt to entangle the far leg, which we're gonna go over in the next video, or I can attempt to take the back. If we're this far into it, and I start trying to take the back, he's gone, so let's rewind for a second. Anytime somebody goes, so like we're talking about bottom 411, controlling it with the, this kind of double lever control, and then somebody starts to rotate where we're going to the weak side. Again, we've got material for how to try to finish for the weak side, control and all that. But the assumption right now is if this heel is hidden and we haven't done enough to break our partner's alignment, the earlier we take this leg out and bail to some sort of uh, back take, the better it's going to be. Once Rory's hips go up in the air, when you try to come out and like, finish on a back take, it's just much more difficult. So our best plan of attack if we're transitioning to the back is as soon as someone turns, we're gonna take this hook out. So my entangling leg, as he rotates, I'm removing my entangling leg, but we don't wanna still have like a race here. We're like, right now, I don't have great base to come forward. My right leg is kind of blocking me as I come up. So if you come up and I start to get like, it's not really going to work. So I need to be, at the same time as he's turning away, as I'm doing this, I need to be withdrawing into a technical stand-up and getting onto his waist so that my knee can come across. Let's just rotate so we can see what's happening here. In the 411, I lose the control. He turns, I withdraw my right leg as I continue to hold his, let's rotate slightly, I continue to hold his right knee on the inside, like an overhooking type of grip, not full overhook, but just my fingers reaching into this like this tendon that connects the hamstring. So go to rotate away in the base. I'm slowing you down enough that I can chase the back. If I don't do that part, if I just withdraw to here and I'm not holding his leg, as I go for the back, he's just gonna spin away from me. So again, he turns, I go, I'm slowing him down, and now my knee is blocking his back. So if he continues to turn away, my knee will come into the space between us and I'll be able to chase the back. That detail is key there with that back because what I'm going to do is try and stop you from taking my back by just giving up the pass. Exactly. And then you stop me with that frame. Yeah. So as he turns away, I'm going here. Yeah. He's trying to get his back. To the mat. Yeah. He can't get his back to the floor. Now, if his arm goes behind my back, I won't be able to take his back. So there is going to be like a variable here where if his arm ends up here like so, I'm going to have to settle for coming on top and taking the pass. One of the th sort of phrases that was really like clutch for me is when Ryan Hall mentioned this kind of idea. I can't remember which instruction was, but like, you don't choose whether you get someone's back. Under certain circumstances, when you're getting past the legs, if they want to turn, they give you their back. If they want to throw their back to the floor, you have to take the pass. It's not always up to you. So this is one of those circumstances where, depending on how your partner's moving, we're going from here I'm coming up, slowing you down. I can definitely take your back from here. If you end up spinning back this way and taking an overhook, it's going to be difficult for me to take your back. You're getting past though. Yeah, you're getting past for sure. But let's just rotate. Like, if my knee is here, as long as I'm able to cap the shoulder off, I may be able to drive you forward enough and force it, and still force it. So that's kind of like the the variable. Neither of those variables are really gonna be there if we don't put our knee behind our partner and create some kind of frame to prevent them from throwing their back to the floor. So just a slightly different angle here. Again, he, I lose this control, he turns away, I'm out, and I just lead with this knee. So wherever he is, if he's belly down, I'm here. If he rotates back into me, my knee is staying behind his back and I'm trying to still find my left underhook wedging underneath and attempting to go to the back. This is something that, you know, let's rewind. I used to do this a bit differently. If somebody turned away, they'd start to get up. 
I would try to control their legs somehow and get to their back this way. What I found, and again, like if you watch higher level, like really higher level competition, guys that are good at wrestling, once they get here, are so good at just stripping your grips. That's really good alignment. To yeah, ex exactly. Like it, that's like we take for granted that someone's back being to, towards you in jujitsu is like, oh, it's game over. No, man. Like if you watch ADCC, if you watch MMA, guys just turn and do this. And really good jujitsu, like guys who are not good at jujitsu, objectively at a, like a, at a global like elite level, guys who are not good at jujitsu but really good at grappling, <laughs> they just do that. And really good jujitsu guys can't do shit to them. So one of the things we want to try to do, and like you know, these are additions or uh, adjustments that we're making, is like what works at the absolute top level. At the absolute top level, once someone's here like this, they're really not going to take their back unless you can create like a mat return situation, which means your wrestling has to be there. So like if you're just a guy who sits on his butt and goes for leg locks, and you're trying to take the back off of that, if you don't have those complementary wrestling skills, there's no way you're gonna take the back at that slightly later stage. So the, what we're advocating is as a troubleshooting thing, as soon as this turn happens where the heel is hidden, I'm blocking this, taking this out, and attempting to get this knee in here so that it doesn't become a scenario where, let's go back for a second, where I was chasing the leg, you were, and then I got to here, and now I'm trying to like, come up and take your back, and that sort of stuff is happening. Crazy right? scramble. Scramble, exactly. Definition. So, again, I know it's a little bit different than the way I've done it in the past, but that's the whole point of putting this shit on the site is to update old information.